welcome to Pack Me, a podcast about Magic the Gathering Limited, where we take a dive into the current limited format. The Pack Mates are a group of helpful card sharks that love drafting, hanging out, and going to F and M. Don't forget to check out our socials and join the Discord. The links are in the description. I'm Ryan, your artifacts correspondent. I'm Andrew, your toxic correspondent. I'm Roby, the resident equipment correspondent. <laughs> this week. We're talking F and M, top commons and uncommons, and doing a little bit of mulligan talk. And we are the pack mates. mates. Oh, hell yeah. First up, we're gonna start with Roby leading us in with his F and M deck tech. How'd it go, yep. Roby? So this week I was playing red blue oil counters. And you might wonder why I was playing red blue oil counters. Like, what made me commit to this in the draft? And the answer is uh, basically nothing. <laughs> like, there's no good reason why I'm doing this. Basically, I just kind of ended up here. Kind of where the table was sending me. But uh, I ended up somehow going 3-0. And it was kind of crazy. I uh, ended up just beating people with, like, all my random aggressive threats. That, like, kind of just led into, like, late-game blowouts with, like, either Quicksilver Fisher or, like, even Anointer and, like, the Crackler and, like, a bunch of other stuff that I'll talk about and explain in a minute. But basically, yeah, it did pretty good. And some of the comments that I had that really, like, made this kind of work out, like, this weird strategy. I'll probably start with the uncommon that made this deck work the most, which was Churning Reservoir, which is the one-mana uh, red artifact that puts an oil counter on something at the beginning of your upkeep, and then you can pay two if you removed an oil counter from something and create a 1-1. One, one. And this kind of just, like, enabled all my oil synergy, which was... Goes to my next common, which was a uh, Koldotha Crackler, which is the two three with trample that gets plus one plus zero oh for each uh, oil permanent you control with an oil counter on it. So I would just end up spreading out my oil counters everywhere. And uh, my next important common was uh, Iker Synthesizer, which is the one three one in a blue for a uh, whatever it is that basically is unblockable as long as it has four oil counters on it. Every time you cast an instant or like a non-creature spell, it gets an oil counter, and it was pretty good. It ended up uh, becoming a late-game threat, being an unblockable 3-3. I could always equip it up with like a barbed batter fist, the equipment that gives something plus one, plus oh, or my, plus one, minus one. And uh, yeah, the Sawblade Scamp, the, the one-mana one-one that, Taps to remove an oil counter worked really good with turning reservoir because you could get the oil counter off it and then ping them for one and then it would enable you to make a one one for two. So, yeah. And then, uh, probably my second most important uncommon was probably the atmosphere surgeon, which is the guy that where you remove an oil counter and then you get to give something flying. It's a two one for two, but yep. And I had zero rares. But honestly, Hex Gold Halberd, the two mana, two the two mana equipment that gives something first strike and trample as long as it's your turn, kind of felt like a rare. And uh, my biggest weakness in this deck was specifically like big green red creatures. I think like I don't know if I could have beat went three zero if I had to face like nothing but red green. And uh, my sickest interaction was probably <laughs> at one point. I had a uh, 9-1 First Strike Trample cr Crackler, which was pretty disgusting. And uh, That sounds gross. It was very good. It was very gross. And the, probably the biggest lesson I learned from my draft was take cards that go into the most decks and let the table give you your synergy. Because I started out with the first pick Rebel Salvo, thinking like, well, I'm never going to wheel this. And it goes in every red deck. It was the strongest card in the pack. And so I kind of just tried to stay flexible and I ended up in red blue. That's how you do it. Yep. Yep. And then I have some. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. You're good. You still got more to go, right? Yeah, I just have one. But well, what lesson what did lesson you learn did I from, the game? from my yeah. games? 
I need a lot of dice counters for oil. <laughs> That's a cop out like, lesson. <laughs> yeah, like the, like like there was there it was it's so complicated, honestly. Like having because I had three churning reservoirs in my, oh my God. so like like the amount of dice I was putting on everything was ridiculous. Like I had dice on my barbed batter fist. Yeah. Like the equipment. I was yeah. putting him everywhere. Because yeah. the general strategy of this deck was I just wanted uh, oil counters on everything. Right. So that way I could get my cacklers bigger. Yeah. And Your also anointer. for the anointer too. Yeah. Yeah. That leads me to my first question. And that's like, is Urbrass anointer like actually playable? In your deck with three churning reservoirs, it seems like it still was maybe not the best. I would play. Okay, so this is how good I felt it was. In oh, my sorry. Deck. And it's the 4-2 it that deals X where Yep, the 4-2 that deals X where X is the number of oil ca- permits you control with oil counters in it. Mm-hmm. In my deck, I would have played a four mana sorcery that had the same text as okay. this. Cause it was so good. Like yeah. I was usually hitting for like three or four mm-hmm. okay. and that it was just like, and I got the four, two, which trades with everything attacks like super disgusting with the surgeon. Like if I could ever give a flying, right? Yeah. Like it was just very, very, very strong in my deck. Would it have been still playable if you had zero turning reservoirs? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Cause like I've just tried to make it work with no success. That's the only reason I'm asking. Yeah. I think the it's specifically only good with churning reservoir. Cause I don't know mm. if you can get like a deck full of oil counter permanents. Yeah. I think it's like, decent in the gruel deck with that. They have yeah. a bunch of oil guys in the beginning. Little yeah, guys. even if you like ping something for two, yeah. like and, I think the threshold is like probably like it, I think it's playable at one oil counter, but I think yeah. at like two and three, it gets very good. I mean, the yeah, guy's so cool. Just any target with that guy is really good. You also, hardly ever too, see that. like go it face. can go face. Yeah. I won games off it going face. Nice. Yeah, but yep. Um, did you ever play Tamio's Immobilizer? Yeah, it wasn't like the best card in my deck. Yeah. Okay. Because I know like, you're gonna say that, but follow up. Did you ever lose a game that you played Tamio's Immobilizer? Yes, but they instantaneously killed it. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't know if it really Counts. scratches your <laughs> yeah. edge. It is one nice thing about it, though. I think it's slightly better that it costs four instead of three. <laughs> so this is like a super niche meta interaction. But I think it's better that it costs four because then your opponent doesn't get to proliferate whenever they shoot it with a three mana green card. Yeah. Because I had two opponents do that. Yeah. And they didn't get to proliferate their poison counter. So that's funny. Yeah. So I think it's slightly okay, but I don't think this is really the deck. Though it was basically in there because it had oil counters on it, right? I mean, yeah. I think. To me, good. so far, I've been super impressed with that. I've never lost a game that I've played it. I've been Have crazy. you ever played it in Red Blue? No, I haven't played yeah, Red Blue. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I was asking, right? Like, I only play it in basically White Blue, but, like, I think it's super good. Um, I'm changing my last question, so you're not really prepared for this one. Did you ever do the cute thing where you swung with Coldotha Kold- Cacular? It's trigger like resolved and then before blocks you took the counter off atmospheric surgeon to give it flying you can't can't do that yeah because atmosphere surgeons at sorcery right is it yeah it's a sorcery speed. Yeah, oh okay yeah. okay okay yeah. i didn't know that i thought it was instant i will answer your other question though was your losses due to running out of gas or needing more draw yeah i i don't think that was the problem the problem was usually just like uh like not finding a closer or like not respecting poison. I guess I would, my, my only losses were really from like poison, right? Mm. Just getting the, the poison deck gets under you and you just can't do anything. Yeah. It's yeah. really tough. Yeah. You start feeling that pressure. at eight Like no matter how you. good your deck is at blocking, if they get like those first like three poison in and they can just snowball that pretty hard mm-hmm. and yeah. there's not much you can do. They just sack everything to get those last points in. Yeah, really or matter. like even like they just have like the proliferate stuff yeah. to like close it out. Yep. 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 Meld one is Meld Web Curator any good? I don't 
No. I didn't it, think it looks good. It's not good. Yeah. I don't think it's good. Me too. <laughs> but like when you play it, because I played it without, I had to play it at one point in time where I didn't have any instants or sorceries in my graveyard. Mm-hmm. And I played it and I felt really bad about it. But then I just like looked at it. And I'm like, it's still like a three, four for four. Yeah. I don't think like it was piece. that bad. I don't think it's good, but I don't think it's bad. Does that like you wouldn't question? have added a second copy to your deck, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah, okay. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it maybe <laughs> only goes in blue, red, and uh, blue, black. Yeah, I never got in theory, it should be good, right? Because like I could get back like a rebel salvo, yeah, but yeah, it wasn't amazing. Yeah, I don't think the tempo loss, even if you're getting something back like that, is worth it sometimes. Yeah, but what, you can yeah. choose to, right? What tempo loss are you talking like about? Like you're just not missing a draw. Like not drawing a d- another card, right? Yeah. You're like drawing a, the, a card that you need. That's why you're putting it on top, right? Yeah, like, but yeah. it is is a slight tempo loss. Yeah, I especially if you're like kind of ahead and you need to play the guy just for curve purposes, but you've already like got something with something else and you're like, ah, I could have just drawn another land or I could have just drawn putting something Putting it on top there. of your deck is much worse than putting it in your hand. It's oh not actual God. card yeah. advantage, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just card yeah. selection. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It, it only goes hand in hand with like premium removal slash like Zeniths, right? Like I'd only play yeah, this with the Zeniths. Yeah. And yeah. it's been pretty good when I Zenith it back. <laughs> yeah. Sends you back. It's like, oh, okay, you're going to hear. Anyways, uh, how good is Axiom Engraver? Tell me how it's the best goblin picker in the it's deck. It's very good. It was, <laughs> it was very nutty. Okay. So one good thing about uh, the Engraver mm-hmm. and the Sawblade Scamp too. Mm-hmm. Like the reason why they were so good in my deck was I could use them to make the goblins on my opponent's turn. Oh, yeah. So like with like the Atmosphere Surgeon, I it was only at sorcery speed that I could remove it. Mm. The counters. Because like I was trying to remove counters a lot just to mm-hmm. be able to turn out more one ones, right? Mm-hmm. So it was good for that too. And it's an insane blocker, right? <laughs> yeah. Sick. Yeah. It is sick. Yeah. I do love me an Axiom Engraver. Yeah, they are good. Huge so I fans. I count 42 cards here with 16 land enough for this <laughs> deck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I, I don't know. Like it for sure is mega wrong. Seems a little greedy. But you know, like I was running 41 and I just was like, huh, I would, I really just want this throw of possibility in here. Like just we're to like just, keep myself from flooding out ever. Like sounds like you were just down bad for this curve here. <laughs> this curve is good though. This, like, you're like, the I first thing I said curve. was, "Look at my curve, guys. It's impeccable." <laughs> Whenever we were putting up our decks, <laughs> like now, only this curve thing is very good. I disagree with the curve is the two five drops and the sixteen lands. Yeah, I I think I needed the the fishers though. Yeah, that's sometimes true. you just can't get through with yeah. like the crack, the cacklers, or the you need a finisher. Other things, like, I just needed like a couple, couple quick finishers. I I had the the six mana jellyfish. Oh no! But I cut it because I think uh, the fisher is probably better. No, I think the fisher six is mana better. four four jellyfish. Yeah, stuff. I think the fisher is fine. I just. Yeah. Yeah. The land to card ratio makes the fisher sus, not necessarily just the fisher. Yeah. I think I I'm a coward for running two of them. I should have just ran one, honestly. That's I think they're fun. good. They replace themselves. I mean, yeah. like card selectivity is really good, especially in a deck like this. Mm. Or you can just yep. pitch those lands and just keep going. I think that's fine. More gas. Yep. Rio yeah. with the red blues. Save that. We'll see if <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen again, honestly. I think reservoirs are free for the red blue deck, though. Like, it's the only deck that well, red yeah. green. Oh, red, oh, green yeah, red green. Red, red green, green what red green wants. Green wants yeah. They want those with those incubation sacks, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. That's way better than pinging them for one with your scamp, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a free combo for, sure. for everybody listening. <laughs> oh yeah 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 Dang. that's just like an entire board and two one man artifacts yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> like it's like an entire game of like hard yeah game like stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's all you do for the rest of the game right like yeah you're good yep. make, three, three, make a one one make a three three make a one one yeah it's so cute <laughs> yeah so uh andrew why don't you tell us about your deck 
Oh, well, you know, this is a, I had a good week this week again. A little 3 0 with this deck. It was a black white infect deck. So we're going for that more, not less, not more on the corrupted side, but it was more of just a hardcore, like, I'm going to get you a 10 infect. Uh, so I didn't really commit to anything really early on in the draft. I took a volt, uh, volt charge like super early. It was my first pick, pack one or volt bolt, whatever it's called. The uh, the three one, what's the volt charge? Volt charge, yep. yeah, volt charge, three one. Three mana up for proliferate. Yeah, three mana proliferate. Anything. Yeah, I took that first pick. It was kind of, you know, it was kind of keep myself open. I thought I was going to be in red. Took a couple of blue cards, took a green card, and then finally I got this jawbone, like fourth or fifth pick. And I said, oh, that's totally going to be open. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to do that. Like nobody's passing those unless you're just not in the infect deck. And so I said, okay, so I know at least four people to my side are just not going to be in the infect deck. So what's the jawbone do? Uh, the Jawbone Duelist is a 1-1 one, one double striker with um, Toxic, and it costs two. One colorless, one blue, or one white. And uh, so I went 3-0 with the deck. Um, I won most of my games with just fast infect and combat tricks. Uh, one of the better combat tricks in the deck is actually the Complete Devotion. It gives plus two, plus two. And then if your guy has Toxic, you get to draw a card, which is pretty sick. Uh, some of the key cards in this deck where the Jawbone Duelist, like getting that... Any of these creatures that have Toxic that are in the two-drop slot are pretty good, and this guy is probably the best one in that slot, just getting too Toxic, and the guy has a decent, like, enough... Like, not to say evasion, but it's like, you don't really want to block him with your one-ones because you're just going to first strike him. I, um, I would call that evasion. Yeah. I think it is evasion, honestly. Yeah. That's I mean, first def- strike, basically, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, one of the better uncommons in the deck was the Annex Shepherd. That guy was just an all-star. Every time I played it, uh, Flensing Raptor was really strong, giving the Jawbone Duelist plus two X. That was one of my combos and sick interactions, just giving that guy <laughs> curving out into yeah. Jawbone Duelist into Raptor is just so sick. And your opponent's just like, wow, I'm on the back foot already. And they're basically almost corrupted at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah and Co- tree is the one that uh, exiles something, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. one four that exiles a three or less cost when it comes to playing as Toxic One. And then the Flensing Raptor is the one that when it's a two two flyer. Uh, with Toxic 1, that uh, when it comes into play, giving another Toxic creature plus 1, plus 1, and fly. And then uh, Complete Devotion, again, that combat trick, which is plus 2, plus 2, uh, for 1 in white. And then you get that card if you're the guy's a Toxic. Uh, some notable rares in my deck? There weren't any rares. I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just all commons and uncommons. Second one in a row. Yeah, second one in a row. There's there's kind Bob of a heavy format. <laughs> I'm heavy format. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, what was the biggest weakness of my deck? My the biggest weakness of my deck was probably the one drop slot. I think my deck would I mean my deck was already pretty good. But I think I could have taken it to another level if I'd have gotten uh there's a one one white creature uh that has toxic one and then when it dies. Uh, you get a, a might token from it as well. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but that guy would have been pretty, pretty good in my deck. Uh, some of the sick interactions were, again, with that duelist getting flying from the Raptor and just going in for two, two, uh, two toxic and four, <laughs> four damage there was pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I mean, something I learned from the draft was, and I saw it kind of earlier when I was drafting, um, you know, we know that we were going to draft in our pods and we were going to play people in our pods. And so... I'm in this black white deck and I'm seeing all these like mesmeric doses going by or just other kind of enchantment type things, you know, enchanted creatures of pacifism kind of stuff. And so I started taking some indoctrination attendants. They're the, uh, it's a three, four for a three and a white comes into play. You get to return a permanent hand. And if you do, you get to create a might. So I said, oh, that's pretty good. I passed a bunch of mesmeric doses. If I play against them, I got them. <laughs> And so it was kind of like a pre-meta game, like within your pod, which was pretty nice. Um, some of the lessons I learned, one, uh, yeah, just one drops really set off this archetype. I felt like I was on the slower side of things. So really get the one drops into this archetype if you're really going to go that way. Um, even missing the, there's a really good uncommon uh, that I was kind of missing in this deck. And he would have really just take this. The took one it to another mana, level. one, yeah. one, death touch. Toxic yeah, the Bilus yeah, yeah. Skull. Yeah, Bilus Skull. Horrifying incredible i've just i was missing that guy like i think he would have been if i just had one of those i think my deck would have even been even better so yeah yeah. okay i got the question that everyone wants to know everyone's talking about it tell me hot off the presses all right is basilica shepherd the real deal must pick best white common that there is 
no <laughs> no not in this in this thing he just kind of was there he was a 3-3 flyer that just made the mites i mean i really just he might as well have been like charge of the mites at this point i mean really that's kind of what it was in this yeah. deck died immediately i just so disposable this guy <laughs> he got in there just to make some mites that was about it and that was there was nothing more yeah yeah i haven't been impressed with it either like I, no. people are just super valuing it and i just feel like it's mid yeah it's not it's not your cloud goat rangers it's not your guys who really kind of do those kind of things where you're cropping out a I bunch think of the mites not being able to block makes it so much worse it's tough it's really really tough <laughs> yeah Bas yeah basilica shepherd's the three three flyer that makes two one one mites that can't block toxic mm -hmm. one yeah but yeah i just think it's just five is so expensive for that really yeah um how was uh zealous conviction in your deck that one one enchantment that gives yeah. plus one plus one first strike if they're corrupted you know it was pretty good except you want to you want to use it more aggressively than you think but you don't have the corrupted by then like there were so many times i had it in my hand i was like man if i just had corrupted right now and that's where like having those one drops are so important because there were times in like turn four where I was like, I should have corrupted by now, right? Oh, nope, they only have two. Crap. Mm. And so this is like, it's not looking as good. It was nice. It led to some, it led to a couple of good blowouts, but you know, you just got to be really conscious of having those one drops to really set that thing off. Follow up. Would you rather have another Sinu dancer, the one, one that can tap stuff for four or one if they're corrupted? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather have two Sinu dancers or two convictions? The Senu Dancer has won me so many games. You know, that's a really skill testy kind of card, too, because it's like, when do you tap it down or what are you tapping down? Like, how do you? And then just navigating the Corrupted on, too. Once you get Corrupted with Senu Dancer, man, it is just a house. Yeah. That guy is really strong. Even at four, I tap something down just to get that last or to get that first point of Corrupted there, you know, that into that three toxic area. Uh, I'd yeah. probably take the Senu Dancers looking at how the deck shaped out. And yeah. it was another one drop. <laughs> we played each other for fun and there was. A point where your senior dancer was your scariest card and i had a uh, o-ring it all right also for yeah. also for it yeah <laughs> all right that's it for me you got any questions robes yeah was uh was feed the infection good i'm curious about that one feed the that's infection. the four mana you draw three but you lose three life right i gotta tell you i chipped some people out with that like yeah i was i was curious about that it sure. was kind of nice like honestly the refuel in this deck is pretty good you don't really have yeah because you have so many two drops right like, yeah your guys are pretty straightforward too they don't really do very much like i'm not two for wanting a lot of people in this deck so extra card draw in this deck was really important like infectious inquiry and the feed the yeah infection. that gives you the poison counter too that seems real yeah too. but the feed the infection was actually pretty decent I, I mean i think i chipped somebody like i think i killed them next turn because of that extra three damage that i got there was one turn where i think i could have done it like could have done like seven points of damage or something like that but yeah. anyways and yeah it was my next good. question was did you ever just win with like regular damage i did <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, it just I, happened. I seem like that. It seems like that's like hard mode in the stack, like yeah. <laughs> trying to win with real actual damage. Yeah, it was kind of weird. There was like a weird game where I just the you know like the indoctrinate indoctrination attendant only has one toxic, but it has three, and so power, you're just like yeah. yeah, three powers. I was like, ah, all right, fine. It wasn't <laughs> quite funny. where I wanted to be, but it was you know it was, it was what it was. <laughs> then my third question i have is uh what did you ever uh bounce your annex sentry with your indoctrination agent heck I yeah i i took That's out interesting, so many I, I saw this looking at this i was like yeah. did you ever like hit a token with your annex sentry? absolutely then, yeah that's so freaking lootly <laughs> yeah yeah that was annex so sentry is horrifying yeah, that guy was really good. And just like hitting those tokens was just so nice because they were just like, oh, that was my whole plan was to block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it just dang. like bodies the four mirrored and tokens too. Yeah. Yeah, it was that's nice. Horrifying. Then you reset it. It was very nice. Yeah, yeah that's good. all I got. But. I'm not seeing any sus cards in here, Roby. You know, it is good. This is like the best <laughs> deck I've seen Andrew make in a fucking minute. <laughs> <laughs> it was like all oh, my decks bad. I don't know. Like, yeah, Ryan, that's like, what it's typical. Andrew. Andrew sack, and then I like look at it. And I'm like, oh man, this is actually horrifying. 
it was it was just good those one. double Jabba and do lists with uh, <laughs> comp- three complete devotions is so scary. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely dealt six damage in, and uh, with that guy. Like, it was pretty good. It was like, yeah. look at that. All right, get in there. The raptor into complete devotion just for eight. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, that's, that's pretty- yeah, that's, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Ryan, tell us about your deck this week. All right. Well, I was playing white-blue artifacts. Um, basically I had a very late Unctus's retrofitter, which is the two, three that makes an artifact into a four, four for three in blue. And that made me uh switch to blue. My record was two Oh and one. And I won games with like grindy artifact advantage. Like all my cards kind of give me like a little part of a card. Like they just do a little something extra and it's like good enough to like eventually grind out the board. But I could also be the tempo deck sometimes. Um, the cards that made my deck work, I have Malkator. It was like super good. That's the three mana artifact that you scry to. And then whenever you play an artifact, it becomes a 4 4 until end of turn. Uh, and people are like kind of still sleeping on that card. But my deck literally had 17 artifacts out of 23, 24 That's cards. Nutty. So basically every turn, it was a. Uh, it was an artifact and the secret thing that people don't really talk about with that card is like people will just not block it and take it and just hope that you can't turn it on again next turn (laughs) and what they don't know is like i can always turn it on literally whenever i want like and it's wild and like i i've been there before too like I've, i've played against that card when it was early and i thought like oh i just won't block it this time and like hopefully he won't be able to turn it on and like beat me with it and they just they always do because all your cards are artifacts. Um, also, I had Transplant Theorist. This one was one of the more iffy cards. I almost cut it. It's a four mana, three colors and a blue, two, four artifact creature. And when it enters the battlefield or another artifact enters the battlefield, you draw a card and discard a card. Uh, huh. And then you can pay two and put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. It was an all star in this deck. I pitched so many lands. I was just was choosing my hand. I was going through almost my entire deck, mm-hmm. like just picking the cards I wanted to play. Uh, I played against Andrew a few times for fun, and I think Andrew can testify that like when I had the engine going with this guy, like it just kind of felt hopeless. Like it just felt like you had to win soon, or you're just gonna eventually lose the card selection. Yeah. Um. And then Unctus's retrofitter, which we talked about two three, was amazing. And then the one one flying vigilance, uh, Malkator's watcher that when it dies, draw a card. It's like yeah. pretty good. And two turn two that and turn three retrofitter, like making it into a four four is insane. Yeah, oh, that's pretty good. That card's good. Yeah. And uh, notably, I had no rares in my deck, just like everyone else here. Bomb heavy format. <laughs> Bomb heavy format. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's uh, crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I went 2 0 and 1. I, t- I went to time, tied in a very close game. Like, I don't know if I would have pulled it out or if he would have, but I was at like four and he was at two at the end. So <laughs> it was it was close. Um. My deck did need a few more two drops. I would love to have had a few more of the mandible justiciars. That's the two one lifelink that whenever you play an artifact, it gets plus one plus one. That card is really sick. Seems good and, in this deck. Yeah, yeah, I saw you doing a lot of tricks with that with the charge of mites. Yeah, that was one that was my sickest interaction. I swung with the Justiciar. And the guy blocked with two two twos and I charge of mites made two one ones at instant speed and made it a four three and traded with both. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah, it's just like he was just tired of me just swinging. Like, <laughs> like I just kept swinging it, like expecting him to block with like a two two, right? Yeah, and he was just tired of me gaining two lives. He's like, whatever, I'm gonna double block it. And then I had, I mean, I had the charge of mites the whole time. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah. I really like charge of mites. I think it's an underrated card, but most I play with in white blue a lot, obviously. Yeah, just because it turns on the eyes at instant speed too. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um. In this draft portion, I learned that people are like disrespecting and under evaluating blue cards. Uh, Unctus's retrofitter is like a solid bomb. Like it's a 2 3 that makes a 4 4. Bomb heavy format. It's a bomb. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> and I am Malkator is still not getting the love that it will eventually get in this format. Yeah. I Ryan just uh, derailed this a little bit. Had a seven Eye of Malkator deck. <laughs> that made me kind of a believer. Like Ryan's uh, definitely been like that. I have Malkator like yeah. Stan out of everyone I know. Yeah. 
It's just How like you, you see him so too? late. I got seven wins. I had seven, <laughs> yeah, seven and one. I had seven <laughs> I am Malkators. I probably had more than yeah. 17 artifacts in that deck. Yeah. It was like 20, it was right? Like it was funny. like 22 artifacts. It was a lot of artifacts. Stupid. It was sick. <laughs> it was just like I had two of the Tamios immobilizers too. Like, oh God, it was just so dumb. Watching the games was silly. Oh man. <laughs> like it was so nutty. Yeah. Like I was the beat down. Seven three mana do nothing artifacts. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> nobody could out tempo me. Like they would all try. Like every yeah. single person <laughs> would like be like, no, I'm the beat down. And I would just constantly swing a four four and play another four four. <laughs> swing yeah. a four four and play another four four. The, like, the scry too is like the key to that too, because you get to keep continually yeah. putting on the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Like that that's too, the yeah. brutal part, little ability on that. Yeah, I was gonna say you were talking about blue being underdrafted in our in our pod. Yeah, there was no respect put on blue sun zenith. I think I got that fourth pick. That's amazing. I mean, it was. Inc- I had to. T- I take. I took it because I just didn't want to play against it. Like I yeah. literally. I normally don't hate draft, but man, that was one of the ones where I was like, "Wow, someone must have the most savage blue deck." If that's getting passed around the table that late, it actually turned out the guy to my right that was passing to me was also in blue, but he was mm. just not in the blue artifacts deck. So it was just a completely different deck. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I always like that. That's kind of a hallmark of this format where you can two people could be sitting next to each other, but drafting completely different kind of it's, styles. There. Yeah, that's wild, right? And have completely different cards they value. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did take one of my eyes of Malkator, and then he, uh, uh, he didn't play because uh, he didn't have the artifacts. If I had a third one, I think I might have yeah. got the old three zero. But nice. We'll what was some of the what were some of the big plays in this deck? Um, just like turning a flyer into a four four. Yeah. I had two, I had three vigilance flyers, so yeah. that was sick. Transplant theorist getting value was sick, and like I'm a huge proponent, and everyone's a hater of against all odds. <laughs> and <laughs> me and Andrew are both notable haters of against all odds. Everyone is, yeah. everyone is, and I'm gonna keep <laughs> picking them. It's the uh, it blinks something and it returns something that costs three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it's so so good when you just like trade off your random for mirrored an artifact, then like on on two right, and then you play an I am Malkator on three, and then you against all odds and bring back a random two drop and blink your for mirrored an artifact to reequip it and remake a two two. Like it just is an instant board yeah. builder. Um, you have to work for it. You have to have like something in the graveyard worth getting. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you have to have something that you blink. But basically, I ended up playing those instead of the draw three, and I think it was correct. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think I. <laughs> I can believe that. Oh you can my do some gosh! Really degenerate things with I have Malkator. With the you have fall, to have right? so many things. Like there were so many things that you were saying there that have to happen before this card is good. No, you think <laughs> that right? But like, really, realistically, you just have to like trade a Malkator's Watcher to draw a card. Yeah, something that was pretty nice. Like, you were, that's not hard. That was kind of cool yeah. when you were blinking dead equipment. I thought that was kind of nice. Yeah, like, that's bringing yeah, back that's a rebel. Yeah, Even like nice. not dead equipment, and you just make another two two, like it's fine. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not a fan of the card, but I'm a fan of the song by Phil Collins. Good song. <laughs> yeah. You're not a fan of the card because it bodied you. Yeah. <laughs> How many, like, Coming from the 201. Yeah, I hate to I hate to re- respect Andrew like that, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, I, I, thanks, thanks. Thanks for having I, my back on the show. <laughs> I sniped the big dog gruel deck at the table for everyone with the draw. Yeah. So, what was your biggest lesson you learned, right? Uh, just transplant theorist is actually pretty good. Like, I was unsure about wanting to play it as a four drop, which is like a two four, and doesn't feel that great, uh, and it doesn't look that great. But just the card selection and just pitching like a billion lands was. The super more good. I look at it, the better I, I looks in your deck. So yeah, I was yeah. really iffy about playing it, but I really. The like more it. I look at your deck, the more I wonder why sixteen lands. <laughs> <laughs> Look with that bloated three drop slot. I mean, you're getting three lands on 16 like 90 some percent of the time. <sighs> Seems a little I, sussy. And well, I got the Dune Mover, baby. Dune uh, Mover. Dune Mover. Yeah, we'll get to that. All Star Dune Mover. 
Oh, I didn't dude. actually have them at first, but I traded them in for the Meld Web Curator because the Meld Web Curator was like pretty bad in my deck. Yeah. yeah. But Dune Mover was, was, I was just kept getting like kind of like color screwed. And I was like, I'm going to put this in over that. And, and I needed two drops. It was just fine. Anything else? It's your turn, Andrew, right? Oh, I actually asked all my questions. Oh, you did? Oh, I yeah, have it. Yeah. I was hella oh, okay. <laughs> all righty. So, uh, since you already addressed the Dune Mover situation, has anyone else here accidentally put a Dune Mover into your deck thinking that it's a mirror <laughs> and played the Mirror Lord to try and find it? No. <laughs> no. That's just me. Um, mirror Lord just... playable. Awkward. <laughs> well, I thought D- I thought Doom Mover was a mirror, though. It kind of looks like one. There's that mirror that costs two that you can like. Yeah, I kind of get them mixed up. I think that's yeah. my problem. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. And then, uh, were you attacking more or blocking more? Um, I wasn't quite as beat downy as I was with like the seven I am Alcator deck. Yeah. Uh, my but deck. You have bad blockers. I mean, I have I a bunch of the helms, right? Yeah. The yeah, thing about it is, that. like, all of my two drops were just like so expendable because of against all odds. Yeah. That's and true. my three drops were pretty expendable too, honestly. So, yeah. like, I just kind of, I was definitely usually not the beat down, right? But like, I could be against slower decks. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Okay, like, my against- last question is: uh, Is blue always artifacts? You think I think that? it should be. Like, I think huh. the fact that you got the wow. oil counter deck is like a rare exception. Um, I think blue, white, and blue, red. I think are both artifact decks, and those are like the only good blue decks. I think blue huh. black is like a trap, and I think blue green is like almost not even a real deck. So, <laughs> like, I think you could go blue, red, green artif like oil, like just three color I oil. Be blue, green, oil. Like, I think you might as well just throw the red splash in there, though, and just go, like, all three, right? Teamer, teamer Oil. Yeah. I think I think that'd be a pretty good deck. But, uh, yeah, I think Artifacts is the way to go. The blue, I've had a lot of success with it. I've drafted it a lot. Like, it's just always open. Like, you just get free two-drop Artifacts. You get free three-drop Artifacts. Just people just give it to you. Like, it's just free. You know what I mean? Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. I I was considering being in that deck, but I just... Ended up leaning more into the oil. Yeah. Because I found more oil. Your deck is definitely like the coolest deck. Like, right? (laughs) Like, that's fun. Yeah. It's kind of cool to see just off meta kind of things. You think the. Yeah. 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 The. It's. It. My deck. I was saying earlier. It's like red green, but without the red. Without the green. Without the green. Yeah. (laughs) Without the green and playing the blue cards. Yeah. Just randomly. But, yep. Yeah. It looks sick, though. Yep. It was. It was good. 201. I was happy with it. Had mm. some really good games. Well, mm. let's talk about some commons and uncommons. All right, Ryan, tell us about some blue yeah. commons and uncommons. Yeah, I'm I'm the resident blue guy, I guess. Whoa! Yeah. That, <laughs> that's that's like say, not oh true, my gosh. Uh, oh. I'm blue. Daba dee daba da. <laughs> he has been <laughs> grinding the hell out of this blue artifact deck. It's so milking like, it for all everything you get. It's got. Um, and I'm going to tell you how to draft it. Uh, the first thing you're going to want is I have Malkators. Uh, <laughs> oh, my just God. Need seven. Oh, that's on a top list. Yeah, like, you could have 12. You can have as many or as oh, little as you get. I guess this is uh, if you're Ryan. not seeing them, you don't take this. You don't go in this deck. Like, it's is like that, that necessary? This is by feel, it's right? It's just <laughs> the indicator that it's there. Like, <laughs> if you're not seeing the eyes, then the deck's not there. Huh. So it is that necessary. Like, like you need to be able to, you need to be seeing them. You need to be seeing them fairly late because the <laughs> only deck that's taking them early is this deck. And this deck, I don't think can support two drafters. Well, I, yeah, I would agree with that. So, um, Chrome Prowler is just like a solid blue card period. That's the three, two flash. And when it enters the battlefield, tap a uh, creature and opponent controls. But the fact that it turns on your eyes, it's kind of removal. Like, it just does everything you want to do. It's an artifact. Super good. Malkator's Watcher is in here. It's the 1-1 one, one Vigilance that draws a card flying for two. Uh, just because it's just so good with the Retrofitter. Mm. Yeah. So, turn two Watcher, turn three Retrofitter. It's just like an answer this or, like, lose very fast. And protects your life total. Because, like, you're so happy to trade the 4-4 four, four Watcher with anything. 
and draw a card because like it's so vulnerable because of the retrofitter. It's like if they yeah. kill the retrofitter, you lose the four four, right? Yeah. So you just like depending on what you're playing, like I I don't even do that, but you just like block every time, make them have the buff. They two for one themselves, and you draw a card, and now your retrofitter's like fodder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. And yeah. then you can bring it back with like against all odds and stuff later. It's yeah. uh it's good. And then Tamio's immobilizer is just sick. Like I, we were talking about it earlier. I've never lost a game where I've or I've resolved it. It's the four mana artifact that comes into play with four oil cannons. You can tap it, remove an oil cannon, and tap an artifact or creature. Like it's just so good. But yep. Those are my, my top blue. So cards. I have one question here. Yep. Uh, do you use Chrome Prowler to like actually tap something? Because every time I've had it, it's felt like that text is hyper irrelevant that's mostly what i use it for i rarely to use something? it to, to trade yes oh uh, really huh. i use it on my turn a lot to tap stuff to turn on my eye um, yeah or, oh, okay yeah i did or like that. they'll do uh yeah turn on turn on your eye and tap and something is like pretty good and then which like feels weird right because it has flat, yeah it's a flash, flash, card, right? flash right but like just so often like that just it ends games and then like a lot of times like people will try to like race you so they're, like you know they'll do three you'll do four whatever and then they'll like they'll continue to race you like we'll play in a card and then at the end of the turn you flash in chrome prowler tap their thing down and you just hit them for like 12 and the game's over yeah huh that's interesting like, i didn't just, think about playing it on your turn yeah, know, like a card having flash just tells me don't play this on your turn. Right? <laughs> yeah, like it's not super intuitive, but with the eyes, especially if you have a couple and then you like tap down, like sometimes people will have like a four or five or like one thing that can like block decently. They'll, maybe they'll have like a bunch of two threes or something that can block like all your two ones. And you just tap down the thing that they care about, like the thing that can block. And it's just it's so good. Yep. What do you got for red ones, Roby? Tell us about All right, so my first red common, I think, is Furnished Strutter. The four okay. mana, four five. It's a five mana, four five. That enters the bell with two oil cutters, and you remove one to give something haste. So it's a four five haster, basically. That can also give something else haste the next turn you play something. But yeah, this is a red green signpost common, I think. Like, I don't think you want this in every single red deck, but I think it's super important for the the red green decks because it's just like big enough that's super hard to deal with in this format and then my next up one is uh axiom engraver goblin picker the one three two oil counters removal oil counter discard and draw like a format all-star i think you want this in like basically most red decks i'd be hard pressed to say you don't want this in a red deck and then my i hate to put this here but uh hex gold slash <laughs> the one mana deal two to anything four if it has toxic you love her and it's, Roby, stop. I d but like yeah this card <laughs> is very important in this format i think just oh, yeah. like how it trades so high up against these toxic decks Mm -hmm. Like, Andrew, doesn't this card kill every single card in your deck for one mana? Uh, why, yes, it does. Except Basilica Shepherd, but yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> I think this is like goes in every red deck, actually. This is one of the few red cards that goes in every red deck. But then uh, next up for uncommons, I was hard pressed to find good red uncommons. Uh, I came up with Kerkiphanes. I don't know how to say its name. Cacophony. Scamp. I don't Cacophony. think that's right. I don't know. But Cacophony, maybe? It's a 1-1 one -one goblin yeah. that deals combat damage. Cacophony. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it. And whenever it dies, it deals power equal to... It deals damage equal to its power to mm. any target. So I've gotten blown out by this card quite a bit. Nice. It's pretty scary. Any target. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. like So like... Usually the play pattern I've seen with this is you'll be at like eight life. They'll swing in with their cacophony scamp. You'll be like, I ain't blocking that. They'll like play the titanic growth, then sack it after they deal five damage to you and then deal five to you and you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty scary. Like be aware of it. Be afraid of it. And then uh, I hate to put another removal spell up here. You but Rebel it. Salvo is like 
the only way that red decks can really deal with bigger creatures like a furnace strider or like any random five five but yep it's pretty important deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker it has affinity for equipment which is super irrelevant (laughs) but yeah those are my it's good for three it's wild for one yes it's it's very good for two yeah, like, wow, it's very good for three. Now. It's really very good for three, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. honestly, yeah. yeah. It's first pickable. It's hyper first pickable. I first picked it this week. Yep. So what do you got, Andrew? Well, I was doing some top three common black cards and uh, some top two uncommons that I think are good in the black uh, color here. Uh, I went with Anoint with Affliction. It's a uh, the one one colorless one black. And then you get to exile a creature if it has mana value three or less. And if they're corrupted, you just get to exile any creature. Premium removal just goes in every deck. Uh, the next one I have is Blight Belly Rat. Uh, it's a one colorless, one black for a 2-2, two, two, toxic one. And then when it dies, you proliferate. So, you know, it's it fits in the toxic deck. It's one of the cards that you'd want to see in your toxic decks. You know, just getting that extra proliferate in there. But, you know, it can kind of it kind of swings other places but you know when you're in black you're kind of toxic adjacent most of the time um one of the other ones i had was stinging hive master i think this guy's gonna get a little bit more respect as the format goes on but he's a two colorless one black for a three two uh toxic one and then when it dies you get a you get to create a might token and i thought that guy you know just trading up is pretty good and just getting another body on the board is always kind of nice on these guys it kind of replaces itself um and then for my top uncommons, Bileus Skull Wielder, one black for a one one death touch toxic one. This guy is the signpost, like you gotta go some toxic, and he's so, so, so good. Like I can't talk enough about how good this guy is in this format. Like you just the evasion with the death touch trading up, guy does it all. Horrifying. Good blocker <laughs> and good attacker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh Get man! Everything. Yeah, yeah. You see these one-one death touchers, and you're like, man, you know they're normally like all right. Sometimes you play one, but that toxic one on it just makes it a real threat. <laughs> Having an offensive one-one death toucher is <laughs> wild. Yeah, like a one-one death toucher that you want to be swinging with every turn is crazy. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I put Drown and Icker because it's also one of the best, you know, removal spells in that. And it just goes in every deck. Minus four, minus four. Sorcery, though. So do note that. So uh, I forget it. all the time yeah. when I play it. Yeah. yeah me too. I, I forgot. And then I just said, okay, take it back. And uh, then I killed the creature the next turn. But yeah, they, they got another two or three damage in with that guy. And then it proliferates, which is really nice. Kind of stapled on there. A lot of these blue black, they're supposed to be like blue black cards, right? With these proliferate things, but they ended up just being really good with I'll throw an extra oil on something or I'll throw a you know another toxic on you or something like another poison counter. And this card's just premium. It's good. Yep. So my question is mm-hmm. what percentage worse would anoint with affliction be if it just didn't have the corrupted text? Ooh. Significantly. Significantly, I think. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't just jam all the all of these even like you no. wouldn't just like it's I so actually good. last week I had the deck that had a bunch of those but was impossible to get people corrupted. Oh shit. And it was actually like remember my my four color deck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had like three of them and it was like impossible to get people corrupted. I ended up sideboard them out against some people, like they were just not even playable. Yeah. Like, huh. yeah. I just think it turns off so many of these die triggers to that. Yeah, like, it's still like it look at all these playable. die triggers. They're everywhere, right? Like I it feels so bad to have your stinging hive master annoy with affliction. Right? Does it yeah. though? Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Bad. I mean you only play the guy because you want the extra <laughs> That extra vulnerability, right? Like yeah, exactly. a three two for two isn't good. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And it's like a upward exchange of mana, right? Like you yeah, yeah. Up on mana. Yeah. But yeah, what do we have next, right? Um, I had some questions. I every time I play Andrew, it feels like I get one of these questionable hands of should I keep it or not? <laughs> uh and I kind of want to know your guys thought process when mulliganing. Um and I want to start it off asking about high risk hands. What if you have a hand that you know you can win, but you have to draw? Like maybe you have two planes and you need an island and you have to draw it early. But if you do draw it, like you know you have a very high chance to win the game. Do you keep that hand? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe you have three turns. You're on the, say you're on the draw. Ugh. 
You have two planes and one and no islands. Well, do I, have, hit, oh, do I have other ways to interact? I usually need. You have one white two drop. Okay. Full send. Yeah. Full send. They, you what? Say less. Yep. No as way. As long as I have like one creature that I can play. Nope. I probably will just send it. I'm not a buyer. I'm going to send it back to the deck like and two shuffle drop, up. <laughs> two drop on twos is good. That's good. No. Are you li- more likely to keep high risk, high reward hands when you th- feel as though your deck is worse? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'm not winning fair, right? <laughs> right. Like I have to <laughs> I have to have my good cards to win, <laughs> like, right? Like- and they're here. <laughs> Like it's a street fight at that point, right? Like I, I'm gonna have to be greedy to win, right? Right. That's how I feel too. Like I'm more likely to keep high risk hands when I think my deck is worse. When I know that, like, if I just hit this one card, this hand is gonna be sick. Yes, you know what I mean? It feels like a work seventy percent of the time, all the time. Situation. Oh yeah, it definitely doesn't work. But like when you're when you're not the best deck and you go down to six. Yeah. It's so tough, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I agreed. Like, I'm way more likely to keep bad hands with bad decks. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Which is like just, super yeah. counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but like, I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to have to bust a nut to win, right? Like, I'm going to have to <laughs> do something crazy. So, like, I'm way greedier with bad decks because, like, I feel like it's way less fair of a fight. So I have to like I right. can't put myself down even more than I already am playing a bad yeah. deck, which is yeah. maybe super dumb. But yeah, I don't know. Like so much goes into the Mulligan consideration. It's just wild. Like yeah, I think first you have to say like, am I the beatdown or am I the the late game deck? Right. Yep. Like, you need to know that after game one. I think in this format, it's mm-hmm. more like, am I blocking or attacking? Right. Which, I mean, yep. yeah. Same yeah. thing, right? Beat yeah. down or, yeah. am I the beat down or not? So, yeah. and then if I'm the aggro deck, do I have a hand that can pay, put pace on the board, right? That that can that can gain the board and, and keep it. If I'm the blocking deck, do I have something that's going to, like, let me not die? Do I, I have, like... like I don't know. Just so much goes into it. Yeah. Especially in this format too. I think decks also like a good example of this is the deck that I had where I had a lot of very good blockers, but I was also like a beat down deck to some (laughs) of a certain percentage of the time. Yeah. So like for me, keeping hands with that deck was like, especially in like game two, like, knowing whether I need it to be more of the beatdown or more of the blocking kind of deck. Like, especially against, like, the poison decks. Like, I, I was better off with, like, a 1-3 in my opening hand. Like, I would be more likely to keep a hand with, like, a 1-3. Yeah. And yeah. bad, bad lands, right? Yeah, one threes, like, one threes just make you feel safe, don't they? <laughs> they really do. <laughs> they really do. They just make you feel so safe and cuddly. This is going to ruin us for other formats. It is. Like, one threes <laughs> like, are generally just bad. Oh it's a bad gosh. time to get into drafting because you're going to think one threes are good for the rest of your life. No. I had a question I wanted to specifically ask Andrew about Mulligans. Hey, yeah. Like, Andrew your... might be, uh, just to pre- preface this, I think me and Ryan can both agree. Andrew is probably the best mulliganer out of all of us. He's the most conservative, <laughs> right? Like, I think he <laughs> wins good. more games than we do off of like mulligan decisions. I think I'll, I'll give it up to Andrew on that. Yeah, Thanks, I guys. do. I do always feel like I want to ask Andrew, like, if I yeah. should mulligan the hand. Right. <laughs> I like too. how he asks everybody else and then he asks me. <laughs> well, I'm playing you. I'm so playing funny. you. Yeah, I know, I know. It's I don't fun, want to show fun, you my fun. hand yeah. unless I pitch it, right? Yeah. No, it's cool. I like when you do that. It's a real it's a real lot of fun. Yeah. So what's like the question? What, uh so like what are your boxes like? What is your like checklist that your hand needs to hit? Okay. So it's gotta have it's gotta have my colors, but if it doesn't have my colors, I'm willing to accept a one color hand. But I have to have cards that I can play, at least two cards that I can play. So then you're like, because if you mulligan to six, it's like, okay, well, I've already kind of mulliganed already, right? Like, I got to have some kind of action there. Like, against, I played a hand against you where I had uh, two planes and, like, 
three white two drops and two blue cards in my hand and i was like this is pretty good you know it was a very aggressive start too so i had some interaction there and then i just never drew my other color but i still won like on turn probably like was like a five or something like that because i knew like this is a good play pattern of that hand um and then just taking into consideration after especially after game two what your opponent's on because if you're looking at a hand of like four lands and like a four drop or like even a three drop and you know your opponent has can has the pick capability of going one two three drop you might as well just mulligan that hand because you're not getting back into that game if they if they really curve out on you and so you got a hard rule like like the number of so is it like you need two playable cards or you need t- like two cards that you can actually play with the just the cards in your hand yeah, I think so. I think you got to have some kind of action in your hand, right? Like, you just don't want something where it's like... So, like, how many of those have... Play. <laughs> what if it was just two interaction spells, but not creatures? I've taken those. That? They Is get that a little helpful? risky, but it also buys you the time to get into the other color that you're getting into, though. You got to think you've just bought a bunch yeah. of turns if it's removal spells, so it's not so just... It is a hard rule of two, though, right? I'd say hard rule of two. Sometimes go to three, but, like, three is, like, I want to have three playables, but... Two sometimes is all right. Two's a little risky for me, actually. Two playables. What if you had Well, if two? you have like five lands and two cards, that's fine. You know, you just keep going with that. I mean, it's not that's not too wild. Okay. What if you had like two lands, okay. a decent two drop, yeah, and your bomb four drop? And no. there's like random other no. Is, is it um, do I have the colors in my hand for that drop? You only have one color. You ha- you only have one color, but you have the two drop. Like, you can play the two drop. Nah, I feel like I've mulliganed to four. I've, I feel like I've mulliganed already to at least once with that hand then. That's where I keep, right? <laughs> yeah, that's my problem, those. right? That's oh, like, that, I keep yeah. those. Yeah, always. I feel like I've already mulliganed. Like, I was just like, so I'd rather have just a better hand and take the mulligan on that point. Or actually, I but feel like I've mulliganed. the reward, though. Right. Like the the possible reward, <laughs> <laughs> possible reward, and then your opponent like goes like the like, possible. I probably lose so many games like that. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, does play or being on the player draw affect your decision at all? <laughs> I won't take a risky hand just in general, just because I think I have the idea that I can draw a land. I think you get burned by that more times than you, than it really works out. But you only remember the times that it works out, right? <laughs> I mean, so like, you don't, so you don't, right? huh? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Cause I like, guess. I always do. I'm way right. more likely to keep bad hands on the draw, right? Specifically two landers, right? Two landers. Yeah. specifically, two landers. Yeah. Yeah. But like, Andrew says he doesn't. That's so wild. That's yeah, super interesting. Yeah. This, I mean, it you might be, be like, you hmm. might be right, Andrew. Like I, I will concede that like you are the mulligan expert. <laughs> How but then, I? you know, there is there is still the risk of just like, you know, mulliganing down, getting seven lands or something like that. I have to mulligan again. So it is a risk either way <laughs> just yeah. to preface that. But I mean, give your best chance for you to win that game, I think, you know, and what you're comfortable with is always kind of where it's at. And you can kind of feel that out sometimes. Like, I'm just not comfortable sometimes with a one land hand being able to play two spells and then hoping to get more stuff. I felt like I've already mulliganed. Point. What about this? Yo. Do you, so let's say you're on the draw. Okay. You are have like an iffy hand, like a like a hand that you would probably mulligan, uh, you know, most of the time. But like it's it's okay. Like you have like two lands, a two drop, whatever. Okay. But your yeah. opponent has already mulliganed once. Does that affect your decision? Oh, that's oh. going to be my question. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it kind of does, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you just net keep, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's you, like you get oh, your man. two cards up. Yeah, I, I well, we've already have I. Oh man, have I seen their deck already? Or this is just yeah, like, yeah, game two, game two. You're on the play. You won game one. Oh boy, <laughs> you're on the draw. I mean, yeah, it'd have to be. I guess if their deck was super aggressive, then I'd probably have to mulligan with them. And if I didn't have any interaction, but if their deck was kind of slow on the slower side, I'd snap keep that because I know they're down one card and. <laughs> Like yeah. having that, having that chance at getting that, like what Roby was saying about, like you know, your deck's kind of like on the back foot a little bit, and you're just like giving yourself that little bit of more advantage is just, I think it's worth it for the risk there on that, especially if their deck's the pretty greedy slow. Keep. Yeah, greedy keep. 
Yeah, they'll, they'll tell people I'm greedy keeping, but I'm greedy hey, keeping. Andrew is the most conservative, and I think it's fair to say I keep wild hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I still like, remember the one time um, I, like, duress you, and I was like, holy shit. Bro. I will keep <laughs> unbelievably bad hands. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've seen some of the keepers that you've had. It was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and Kobe. I've gotten, like, not punished nearly as much as I probably should. The yeah. best times right, are when you're like, in five colors and you just don't have anything. <laughs> like you can't <laughs> see a single spell in your hand, and you're just like, "I'm gonna keep this." <laughs> and you just rip all the lands. It's like the typical game. Roby play pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I will always remember the one game where I like made you discard your one two that you can tap yeah, other creatures. That was like the one time like, where it didn't pay off. The one like dreams of steel and oil like won me the game on turn one. It was yeah, just like I could hilarious. Play was so good. I could play one card in my hand. <laughs> I had one land, right? Yeah, you had one land and two of the stewards or the stalwarts or whatever. Yeah. You're keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah, it was that was hilarious. Oh man. Like, but you gotta like, do that sometimes. Sometimes, like, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, hey, I'm right. I'm a gambler too, baby. Don't, don't, don't. I, I do be gambling. Like, <laughs> I've won some mulligans specifically with this, yeah. these kind of reasons. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like every single time I've ever like played Andrew, and like I don't ask other people until I have my decision or like till after the game, right? Like I'll like rebuild the hand and ask after the game. Like oh, I'm yeah. not cheating, right? Oh no, 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 yeah. But like. Every single time I've been like, should I malign this when I'm playing Andrew? Like, I ask other people, Andrew's answer is yes. <laughs> like, it's just make it's it's just making me think like I should always malign whenever I ask myself that question. I think Andrew would tell me to malign probably about fifty percent of the hands I keep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like realistically, like <laughs> like like there, I'm just so much more willing to like throw I'm, it all away. High risk, high like, reward. At that point, <laughs> like gambling it out there. Yeah, I've gotten better, but I'm still atrocious. I keep terrible. I keep one landers all the time, <laughs> especially on the draw. Like I'll keep a one lander on the draw. That was the one that we played a couple weeks ago, and I asked everyone. I had one lander. I had a one land hand and six two drops on the draw. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine, right? And one of my two drops was a dune mover. Like. Yeah, that's totally fine. Like I keep it's, those all day. It's like every day. borderline good, right? Like, yeah, that's like yeah. ideal. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like you aren't gonna get flooded anytime soon, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like, yeah. And I'm on the draw. I have 15 out of like 30 lands. Half of my cards are land. Like only twenty five percent of the time, I'm not hitting it in my first two draws. Yeah, right? you're good, like, right? Like that's seventy five percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people get burned so hard on that, like twenty five percent of the time. Oh it's just yeah, like you just get aggressively bodied for oh, keeping yeah. a greedy hand. Yeah, it happens, and you're just like, yeah, like if you don't hit it, you just lose, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I probably win the most. I lose the most percentage of games just to bad mulligan decisions <laughs> are you looser with your mulligan decisions like if you already won game one yes or <laughs> hardcore. I, that. I, am I am too i am too i will keep dog shit hands. yeah like, i already, <laughs> won, I already like, won a game like yeah i want like, to give baby deck was like so usually game care. two for me is science like oh, will God. i get away with this <laughs> like, like like i don't keep atrocious hands because i'm gonna be on the draw right for yeah. sure gonna be on the draw so like i'm even more likely to keep like one lander right yeah <laughs> or five kept in, landers right i've kept like, zero land hands on the game to draw like wow. what, yeah. what that's so wrong. <laughs> zero land <laughs> i have i genuinely really? have oh all i gotta do is top deck one <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you about my bad beat, Roby. Andrew saw it. It was wild. Um, What's up? So I'm playing the guy that I tied with, right? He, we're swinging back and forth because, like, I have like a flyer that's lethal. It's like he's like going all out towards me to try to like outpace the flyer, right? Yep. 
I play, I get them to three. My flyer's the three, two, Hex Gold Hoverwing. Yep. I play Unctus' Retrofitter, and I make something into a four, four, and he has like a five, five. And then I equip it to make it a five, five with like the plus O, plus one. That's really plus one, plus one, because I have the Hex Gold Hoverwings. And I swing with the flyer and the Hoverwings. He blocks the five, five with his five, five, obviously, because he's at three. Plus three, plus one's it. Exiles the top card from his library. Cards Only card that gets him out of the situation. Zero cards in hand. There's shock on the top, and he hits. Oh, he, he hits shock to kill the fire. Yeah. It was that was a high it. level play. It was yeah. so good. God bless him. What a sick, what a <laughs> sick play. It was so That's good. So yeah. tight. I couldn't even be mad. Like it was like holy. Oh man, was like the one good out. On he like him. perfectly him played to his outs. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like don't ever give up. Absolutely. Yeah. Situations like that. Yeah. Like, if you have a out, go play to for it. it. Play, play to, your to out. it. 100% yeah. of the time, don't scoop if there's a 1% chance that you top deck that shock off the top of your deck, right? Like, yep. Because <laughs> I feel like le- lesser players will, like, especially new players, will be like, well, I'm not going to top deck that shock. Like, it's over. Yeah, they'll just yeah. scoop out of frustration. Like, well, I can't kill the flyer. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like actually, like you could have lived for one more turn, and like you, you could have maybe turned the game. You know what I mean? Like, who like, knows? Like, yeah, there yeah. is like a one percent chance that you hit that, and you just end up winning, right? Can I say like so, it's always significantly higher than one percent? Yeah, it was significant. Yeah, it was like five percent. It was at least five. Like a five percent. Yeah. You had two of them, so it was actually like 10%. It's probably yeah. more, like math. Man, like I'm not going to do the statistics calcs now, but it's probably more than a 10% chance he hit it. But like, yeah, it people will look at that situation, like you, and you'll think like it's a 1%. Because he had like 20 cards in his deck. He had two hex gold slashes in there, maybe three. Yeah. Like, three out of 20 that you don't hit it out of two cards is like... Because like he gets a draw, right, on his turn, and then he like... Because like, a lot of people would scoop, like, I'm a three, I didn't draw the flying. But yeah, yeah. he played to his outs, and like the percent That's is cool. a lot higher than 1%. Like You'd be surprised how high the percent actually is. I think. That was definitely the play of the day I saw. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, was so, so good. <laughs> Andrew walked away and said, I got some ammo for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm glad you brought it up. I, I... <laughs> that was sick. It was, was definitely so tight. a lot to yeah. tell. <laughs> I, I love seeing that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when that's you, like that's what that's what keeps me playing magic, right? Right. Like you're rocking, right? Wins right? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> like that's so tight. Yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was so cool. Oh man. Like, yeah, yeah. You just feel like a G kind of. You know what I mean? You're like, like, I'm so smart. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I'm so good at magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, which you are. You are. Right, yeah. Absolutely. That's really good. If you yeah. could, like, have the wherewithal to, like, recognize that you're able to, like, have an out and you hit yeah. it, it's amazing. Right. Yeah, that's so tight. Yeah. Good time. But all right. I think that's all we got this week. No alpha, yeah. me and Andrew, about 3-0. Yeah, we yeah. shared the alpha. No. We shared our, rejoiced in our shared victory. Yep, yeah, nobody lost the game, so... We're all three yeah, alphas, kind yeah. of. <laughs> well, not everyone won all their games, but yeah. yeah. Some of us. Yeah, that, nobody lost. Nobody some of lost us beat either. those that won all their games. Some of us did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, we, we take what we can get. Ooh, we'll so. see you today yep. now. Today's going to be the rubber match for you and me, Roby. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's all we got this week. Bye. Bye. Catch y'all on the flipping floor. Bye. Bye.